Hi and welcome to Podpad Studios. Now, when we're out and about at events, we always get asked about the radios that we use. Now, obviously throughout our previous videos, I've talked about different radios. I talked a lot about this when I first bought it, the X20S, in comparison to my Spectrum that I had before, the DEX18. Um, and to be honest, even to this day now, I've had this radio, well, quite a while now, and it's, it's superb, it's absolutely fantastic. There's, you know, it's hard push to find anything on the market that's as good as these. Um, but ultimately, they're all the same. It doesn't matter whether you've got the X20, X20 Pro, whatever, all of these things. They all use the Ethos operating system, and that's where the, where the, the real um, the, the trick is, you know, how versatile that system is and, you know, what you can do with it. Anyway, X20S, I use that a lot with controlling the droids, smaller robots, Daleks, stuff like that. Uh, the tray radio, this is the XE. Now, tray radio, because when we, when we were running Tiffany, um, it was so much easier to use a tray radio. I didn't need to hide in the audience. We were very much in with the robot controlling it. So the tray format was much, much better. Plus, I needed a little bit of customization. I needed a lot more switches than I had on the X20. Now, yes, there are logic switches and all that kind of stuff, but I actually needed physical switches on the radio. And what the X20, well, sorry, what the XE can do is it can give you extra switches because it's configured to add more switches after you've you've purchased it. Normally, you can see there, these little switch where I've got these little switches here, these are blanked out when you buy the radio and then you can fit your own switches. Now you can use all sorts of switches. I've used slightly different switches here in that these are momentary switches, but they're three-way momentary switches. There's a reason for it, but I'm not going to go into that now. And, and then on the back of the radio, I've got an output port on the back as well, which I've run from the switch unit inside, so I can add further switches to it via a tether if, if I need to. Now, how is that done? How do you add switches? A lot, I've had a lot of people ask me. So it's really simple. Look at the back of the radio, and on the back of the radio, you see these oval-shaped holes. Undo the screws in the oval-shaped holes. I've already taken these two out here. Turn it round and then gently pull on the little unit here. Oops. I'll just I'm going to hold the radio so you can actually see this. You can pop that out and the whole switch unit, as you can see, just pops out. And on the back of that unit, um, again, it's probably quite hard to see. I'll bring it a little bit closer to the camera so you can see. On the back of this unit here, on the main board, there's two extra kind of holes um, on the back of that board. Um, little, and you can plug in two extra switches and all you do is buy your switches and plug them in. And once you've plugged them in, you can then obviously you go into your radio, um, go into your radio menus and you configure the switches however you want to use them within the radio like you would do with any other switch in Ethos. And really that's how you add switches to these. Um, obviously you've, I've got these extra gimbals on as well. Um, I can't remember what they're called, they've probably got a technical word, but it allows me the rotation, but I also gain an extra switch on the end here. Now, obviously, if you don't have these, that then gives you more positions within the radio on the board that you can actually put in more switches. So it's very, very versatile in terms of the number of switches, physical switches that you can add to this to this machine. And that's that's why I have one of these and we use it with the bigger robots. I've recently purchased this and I must admit, I, I, we got it as a trainer radio. Um, so when we were out and about, obviously I can, I can work with people on driving some of the robots around, but we also got it as a secondary link radio. So obviously via the Paralink, we can link it to the tray radio and then we can allocate X number of channels to it. So we can have one person controlling the head, movements of the robot, the eyes, the ears, everything else. And then the main tray radio can actually control the movements of it. So they're together, they were, they were brilliant. I've been using this a lot, I must admit, as a primary radio. It's so well built. I mean, I can't emphasize how good this is, really, and for the, what you pay for it. But again, it's got the power of ethos. It's the operating system that makes all of these systems. It's not creaky. It's absolutely rock solid. It's so well built, like like the XE, but the same as as this. They're just they're great. They're absolutely brilliant. Right. One of the extra things that one of the things I was asked quite a lot 
is how did I change my stick configuration? Now, what I mean by that is if you look at this X20 here, you see that obviously this position, it bounces backwards and forwards and that bounces backwards and forwards and this bounces backwards and forwards, but the throttle position stays in a particular position. Right, now I didn't need that. So obviously when we were driving some of the tanks, the bigger one sixth scale and one quarter scale tanks, we didn't, I didn't need that configuration. I needed a slightly different configuration. So this control here is the same. It's sprung loaded up and down. This is sprung loaded left and right, but it's also sprung loaded now up and down. So this control here is exactly the same as that one. They're absolutely identical. So how did I do it? Right, so here's how you change the stick position on the, on the uh, Tandem XC. Remove the battery, it just plugs into the back of the radio, so undo the cover, take the battery out, leave the cover off. There are a number of screw holes all the way around the back of the radio. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remove all ten screws. And then what you will then find, it's really, really simple, the uh, back of the radio will lift straight off. Now, there are wires connecting to it, so lift it off carefully like this, and then you can tilt it upwards, and that means that you don't need to then remove any of this wiring to the external port. You can do if you want, just, just undo the screws and then take it off that, as I said, it's the wiring to the external port. The, what you're going to adjust on the radio is really, really simple. Now, hopefully, I've kind of propped this up so you can see, but it's these two screws here. Now these two screws normally, when I had my radio, were tightened down fully, and that gave me the ratchet effect on the, um, on the throttle. So all you need to do is back these two screws off. So literally get, it's an Allen, well I say it's a screw, it's an Allen key, I don't know what size it is, little one. Turn them and keep, just back them off until you're happy with the feel that you get from, from backing them off. So obviously then put the cover back on the radio, flip it over and then test, you know, the position, you, you know, how you want it. I've got it slightly, a little bit firmer than this one on mine, but you can back it off and it, you know, it will be exactly the same as that one. So really that's how you adjust, make your throttle position spring loaded. Now, I haven't taken the X20 apart, but I'm assuming that inside there it's exactly the same. Might not be, obviously this is a different radio. So just sort of to confirm that, obviously have a look at the back of the radio. Let me try and lift this up, easier for the camera to see. In the back of the radio, throttle here, and they're identical on both sides, they're exactly the same. Um, these two bottom ones here, these are kind of like leaf springs and they add tension to the back of the gimbal. You simply back those two off and then you will get a sprung loaded uh, throttle position. So there you have it. That is how I added the sprung loaded throttle position to the Tandem XE.